Hi guys, we're back to the Your Energy Answers podcast and today we have a special person in the solar industry because there are actually not enough women in this industry and Bobby McKibben certainly knows about that and she's from Solar Integrity. Hi Bobby, welcome. Morning Marcus, how are you? Good, I'm fine. I said there are not many women in the solar industry and there were even less a few years ago. What's the reason? Yeah, that's right. Well, it's trade orientated Mm. and it's an electrical trade and predominantly that's been male orientated. So um, we only have under 2% of accredited solar installers in Australia are female. Right. So we're working really hard to change that. Um, And that's one of the reasons to a degree why AWISE, Australian Women in Solar Energy, was born in 2020, was to try and bring the women that are already working within the industry, regardless of their role, um, but bring us all together so we can create a nice little network and support one another and create opportunities and share opportunities and learnings and all that sort of stuff. And then also uh, work towards encouraging more women to join the industry in whatever role they see fit, but also hopefully encouraging them to take on more technical aspects of the industry as well. I mean, there's solar designers, there's marketing, there's sales, there's administration, there's just running a business. Work health and safety, project management, Mm. procurement, Large commercial projects. There's so much involved in this industry. the the opportunities are endless as far as career progression or movement goes. Um, it really I call it choose your own adventure. Basically, remember those books we had as kids? <laughs> choose your own adventure. That's exactly what it's like. So you want to see more women in the industry? Oh, I would love to see more women in our industry. Right, they're they're incredibly valuable. They they bring so much uh, diversity and. Um, perspective, different perspectives to to the industry, which is great. So, and I'm a big believer that um, you need diversity around the table because, and it's not just gender diversity, it's ethnicity, everything, sexual um, diversity, everything. The more perspective, different perspective you have around the table, the more holistic your business will be and the more holistic our industry will be. And I mean, the truth is the buyers are from that whole community, isn't it? It's exactly. not just, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. They're our customers. Mm. So are there any particular successes that Awise has already achieved? Yeah. Awise has done some great stuff since we started. We literally started with a Facebook group uh, and then we expanded and start, decided, okay, well, let's have a, a luncheon at the Smart Energy Council conference. And then that morphed into, okay, let's do a professional and personal development day the day before All Energy in October, Um, and they've been so popular and we continue to do them every year. And then last year we actually got funding from the Victorian government, a couple of different departments, and we're now running a couple of programs. One is Solar in Schools where we're going out and targeting uh, secondary-aged students, particularly female, trying to encourage them to come into the workforce so that they see it as a, a first choice and not a choice as a mature age person. And then the other one is called Solar Sisters, which is a mentoring program for people that are already working in the solar industry. The unfortunate side of that is both of those projects are Victorian funded, so therefore they're operating in Victoria. But anybody listening or who sees this, we are doing it so that it can be picked up and replicated into any other state across the nation. And it would be really exciting to see these sorts of things roll out in other parts of the country. So if you're a school leaver, maybe look at the solar industry as something to go for, especially if you're a female school leaver. Yeah. Okay. Now tell me a little bit about solar integrity. You're in Albury, Wodonga, mm-hmm. so you kind of got to know all the rules about New South Wales and all the rules about Victoria and they don't always match. So tell me a little bit about the company. So solar integrity started in 2017 and that was as a result of a project out in Yakandanda, which is my hometown. And... Um, We helped them deliver 120 solar systems and then there were about 14 solar and battery systems back then. So, um, And that was as it was sort of all a little bit new bringing in the battery systems and that was with a a partner called Mondo Power and Totally Renewable Yakandanda. 
And then we've just grown from that. So it started out with Brett and I working out of our study, as most solar companies start. Um, and then we ended up, you know, growing and Luke came into the business shortly after. And now we employ 12 people uh, in various roles in the industry in our small business. And yeah, we're, we're going great guns. We've got a great little team. Um, they're all unique and offer great fun. Running a small regional business, especially kind of in the border region, um, I always find, I mean, we're running a small business. You kind of have a responsibility for all the staff, you know, it's kind of, there's, there's a lot that rides always on your shoulders and all that. And I think a lot of people who don't run a small business don't actually see that. What is it like running a small solar company in the middle of the solar coaster? Yeah, it's interesting because on one side, Brett, Luke and I are all equal partners in the business um, and we love our industry and we love what we do. And at the same time, you have to be able to juggle all the HR stuff, all the human resources stuff. So that's, you know, the different personalities that we have within the company, their different learning styles or their different wishes about what they want to do in the industry as they progress through their apprenticeships mm -hmm. and everything. Um, but then, you know, if, if, if any of them run into trouble, we also have to be there to support them. And that's outside of work as well. Mm -hmm. Our workers know that our phones are on day or night for them. So if something happens, they can always ring us and we'll always be there to support them. And we have in the past, you know, we've, we did lose one of our employees to suicide in 2018. Um, and that is the hardest thing you will ever do is go to work the next day and have to put, smile to your customers. So we are incredibly passionate um, with our staff and we desperately want them to know that we are there for them at all times. So we are a family. You spend, you know, eight to ten hours a day at work with these people every day. That's more than what, more time than what you spend with your family. So, you know, it, it is really important to make sure that we all get along and, you know, have that fun side as well and, but that nurturing side is is really important. So if you actually pick solar integrity to install your solar, mm -hmm. you don't just get a solar slap bang a company. You actually get a local business that cares for the local community. Is that right? Yeah, and so many of our customers have become friends. So you know, like we've been in this industry for you know I've been in this industry for seventeen years. So and Luke and Brett are not far behind me. So um, that over that time, they're not customers that, you know, it's, it's not a checkout system like mm. the supermarket. Uh, they come back to us for whatever product they want next, whether they want to upgrade their system or whether they're on their second or their third or their fourth house or they want to add a battery or they've got an EV or, you know, everything. They come back and we just love it when they come back. Um, I think to me that's that's what success is. If you have meaningful relationships with your customers like that um, and then, you know, you see them down the street and you'll have a coffee with them or something, that's success. Mm. And look, solar has also changed a lot, isn't it? In the old days, there was a one and a half kilowatt system, six panels, you put it on, you got a cheap electricity bill and you forgot about it. But now with climate change becoming a bigger, bigger issue, we're now actually looking at solar at really on the start of the journey because then you add many other things to it. So can you yeah. explain that to me? Because the company you choose now to go with solar is the one that's possibly with you for what? How long? 10-year journey. Yeah, that's right. Um, our houses are designed and built to last 50 years or, or more, depending. Mm -hmm. um, so there's so much as technology changes, as you mentioned. Solar is the first step in that energy efficiency, um, heating and cooling upgrades, all of those sorts of things, they come along the pathway as well, working towards greater efficiency and, and cheaper um, running costs effectively for your whole house. So once you've done your solar, then you can do your energy efficiency as well at the same time or you can do in reverse up to whoever the homeowner is. But then you might look at adding a battery in and with that comes energy security as well. Like we've had numerous blackouts around our region, pretty lengthy ones too, recently. So energy security is starting to really become a hot topic. Mm. But now we've got EVs coming into the mix as well, 
demand management. So we're starting to talk to customers about when to use their power and how and how they know when the right time is and all that sort of stuff as well. So the conversations are are long and not usually just one. There's right. always multiple conversations with our customers along the way. And then our customers also know that once the solar is installed, we don't just disappear. Uh, we always tell them that they can come back if they've got any questions, particularly their first bill. That can often lead a, a couple of questions for them. A, understanding how the solar appears on their mm. electricity bill is mm. really important and what doesn't appear on their electricity bill because the solar they've used doesn't show up mm. on their electricity mm. bill. So, yeah, talking them through all of that is is really important. So it's not just a one conversation sale. So therefore it's quite important who you pick as the company initially because I'm sure you come to a solar system sometimes that was slap banged on. Now somebody wants a battery and you've got to look at it and maybe you've got to fix the solar first. Is yeah. that what happens? Unfortunately, yes. Um, we've we've been to we've had customers ring up and inquire that have had three different installers at their house for different things and it's it's a jigsaw puzzle that doesn't quite fit that last piece. I think it's <laughs> called know? a shamozzle. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, so it just gets harder the more people that are involved. So if you've got a good company at the start and you can, there's a possibility you can stick with them for the rest of the journey, it's just like, you know, set and forget. Mm, it just mm. clicks in. Everything is much easier because I know for us when we're doing our site inspections, we're already thinking ahead. We're already thinking about where the battery may possibly go in the in the future as well. But we're also having those conversations with the customer mm. at that very first thing as well. So they start to think about it. And then we get to understand what their plans are for their house, how long they're going to be in the house. Um, is it their forever house or are they going Just, to move out in, mm. you know, three to five years or something like that? So, yeah, so we start having those conversations to get them thinking ahead. Um, but it, it is easy. If you've got the one company to work through the whole journey, it is much easier. I mean, um, I bought a house and uh, we wanted to add plumbing to it and nobody had any idea where the pipes were running. So mm -hmm. that was really like knocking on the wall and big headaches. If the original plumber would have been somehow involved or we could have found him, it would have made our life so much easier. Yeah, yeah, that's right, exactly. Same so, thing. Yeah. All right, so what are the services that you guys provide? Yeah, so we, we're electrical contractors, so we can do anything electrical, um, but predominantly, obviously, we, we chose to specialise in solar. So solar is our first and foremost, but along that now is solar and battery Hot water is something else that we do. So we offer the Reclaim heat pump and the Aprica solar hot water systems because when you're talking energy efficiency, they actually marry mm. quite well together. Uh, and now EV charging is coming along as well. And, like, there's even a new thing now that Fronius offer with their systems called an EV, uh, a, a PV point, which is a, a power point that sort of is – operates differently to the rest of the power points in your house where if your power goes out you can plug a lead into that specific power lead, power point and the solar will still offer power to that point during the day so then you can still have your fridges running in that so that's something that's very new that will start to push really heavily in our business and so you can have that during the daylight hours yep. um, while the solar is operating but of course at night if you do want that extra support you would need a battery yes but the pv point doesn't work if with the battery you don't need it right because in the event of a power outage mm. your battery would do that anyway. yes yes but so, i mean yeah. you can have the pv point just for solar yes. without a battery. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. But obviously you hope your blackout is just going through the daylight hours. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know. We need to talk to good old Mother Nature about that and see if she can get her clock working a little bit better, I think. <laughs> yeah. They seem to always happen at night. <laughs> yes, true, true. Well, the more babies in Albury, Wodonga. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say you get 10 customers in a week. How many of those would be word of mouth? Oh, look, I reckon probably 50% wow. would be word of mouth. We've got a really good reputation in the area um, 
and also through all the community work that we've done with the community energy groups and stuff around the region. Um, Luke and I are both born and bred locals, so we're, you know, people do know us from our, our local towns and in Wodonga where we, where we both live now. Um, and Brett's been around Albury Wodonga for over 20 years now, so, or about 20 years. Well, he'll be a local soon. Yeah, he gets his key, <laughs> key to the door. Another 10 In years should be fine. <laughs> I think you've got to give him five yeah. year discount being married to you. <laughs> We're not married. <laughs> oh, 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 talk about putting your foot <laughs> That's in it. it. Not married. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> um, panels. Yes. I look at them from the street up on the roof. They all look the same. There's no difference in the equipment, is it? It's all kind of little shiny boxes now and they'll all be fine. That's the hard part for the consumer to understand is that they all look the same from the street view, uh, but it's what's underneath and what's inside that really matters, a bit like us, <laughs> you know. <laughs> we might all look a certain way on the outside, but it's what's inside that really matters and what, what's going on inside. Um, and that's really important in a solar system as well. So there's, there's so much variance in different qualities of panels and stuff, and thankfully we have seen a lot of, the poor quality panels disappear from the industry with improvements to Australian standards, but it's still not great. There's still more that could be done. Um, and then with inverters, like I, I tell people at home, the one thing you don't want to balk at in your solar system is the quality of your inverter because there's some out there where the wind changes and they'll fall over. So that's where we can... You know, if people invest in quality, there's, you know, there's still there still might be a problem from time to time, but the risk is far less when you're investing in quality. So that's really important. But not just that; it's all the tiny little things, like you know, the silicon on the back of the solar panels. That was an issue of what ten years ago. Mm. So we haven't seen that problem again, thank God. But there's nothing to say that that won't happen again in the future with some other panel manufacturer, you don't know. But um, for us, we really look towards not only the quality of the panel, but the quality of the company mm. that produces the panel uh, and the warranties and where they're held. Because there's a big difference between a warranty being held in Australia or a warranty being held offshore. Mm. So, and that's not just for us and our benefit, but that's for our cons our customers' benefit as well. Because mm. if something happens to us and they've got a warranty or something and they can deal with somebody in Australia, it's much better than trying to deal with somebody overseas. Sometimes the uh, door knockers come and offer you really cheap solar. Should you use them? <laughs> no. <laughs> Short answer, no. Tell them to go away. Um, and unfortunately what that means is usually when they're coming in, they're using cheap product, they're using installers from out of town, it's price, well, I'd like to think that, you know, you'd like to say that it is cheaper in price, but often I've seen them even double the going rate as well where their price is so inflated. So they're really ridiculous. abused pensioners and oh, people like that. They they prey on those people. Um, I know a customer who, and we went back and helped them out to fix their system up. Um he, that person was preyed upon to not only sign up, but then that salesperson kept coming back, knocking on the door, wanting more money, more money, more money. And then, what the price kept on going up, is it? Well, no, it was to feed the family. It was going in that salesperson. Oh, just pocket. as a bit of a charity. Oh, you yeah. you seem to have it giving me a bit more. Yeah. Unbelievable. It was really bad. Anyway, that customer, his family ended up taking it to court and uh, and he was an elderly person and had a few other few other issues going on so he was unfortunately easy target for these people um, it ended up going to court and the judge turned around and said right that's it you are to repay him every single cent that he has paid you and you are not allowed to set foot on his property to take any of your goods back so he ended up with a free free solar system that we sort of helped and 
um, and got it working for him properly. <laughs> so um, I suppose that's a bit of a bonus. But, you know, there was a hell of a lot of heartache in that for the family, a hell of a lot of stress. Mm. And they they felt bad coming to us because we didn't sell them the system, we didn't install the system for them. They just knew me personally and that's why they came to us going, Bobby, we don't know what to do, we don't know where to go, can you please help? So your advice to door knocker shouldn't be always the best gear. No. What about after sales service? After sales service, completely and utterly non-existent. And so, yeah. um, also you potentially get something that later on it's very hard to add anything to it because yep. nobody knows where the cable's gone and everything. So yep. a big no to door knocking. Uh, I could not emphasise those two letters more, Marcus. <laughs> N-O, no. Okay, no <laughs> problems. Now, um, you've been in the industry for quite a long time now. Um, anything changed in that whole time in terms of solar? So much has changed. This industry moves so quickly in so many ways, like technology, the panels have changed in sizes, like now we're talking... You know, we're now looking towards 500 watt panels. That's half a kilowatt. Mm. When I started, we were doing 145 watt panels, mm. you know, so it was very different. Um, and obviously, you know, I could lift them. I could throw them around. Not anymore. No way. Mm. Um, but, you know, technology's changed. Back then, there was no way a householder or business owner knew what their solar was producing because there was no monitoring all they had to do every night is go out and bang on the on the inverter to see what it's produced and then have a look and tally up their electricity bill every quarter and and see how it was operating then. And then if something went wrong, they didn't find out for three months until the next bill. So, yeah, so, so much has changed in that. Um, energy monitoring, demand management's changed around the different times that we can use and, and automation, you know, delay timers and all that sort of stuff on our household products as well. Um, Extra safety features? Safety's changed completely in our industry in so many ways. So there's, ex you know, we've got so many different safety requirements within the inverters themselves mm. to shut down and restart in certain times. Um, but what they can do and how they interact with the grid and what our big picture is as we transition away from coal mm. across to being fully renewable country, um, those inverters are computers like they are so, so intelligent and we use the most minute part of their brain um, to, to produce solar. So they're incredibly powerful. Um, batteries are now coming into it and batteries are so different. You know, we had um, gel, lead acid batteries. Um, if you need a truck to bring them on the, site. The nickel, what was it? The NICAD yes, batteries, yes. you know, all these things have changed. Mm, um yeah. And now, you know, people talk about waste in the industry. We can recycle panels. We can recycle batteries. Um, Fronius inverters are, are made from so much recycled product, which is brilliant. Uh, so we're starting to see those things about it really being a, a holistic environmental practice, which mm. is great. Um, but even, you know, even within small business, things have changed. Safety requirements have changed for installers um, the the gear that we have around safety has changed. Like when once upon a time there was no harnesses, no edge protection or anything like that, and now in Victoria that's daily response, you know, daily requirement, absolute minimum, which mm. is great. Um, and it should have always been, but it was never enforced. Whereas now, um, everybody knows better, and less, and, less, and that makes us do better. Less cowboys in the industry then. Less cowboys in Victoria. They all moved all moved to New South Wales and Queensland. Sorry, guys, but that's where they went. But because the regulations are not as stringent, is it? That's exactly right. So now Victoria, Victoria really is gold class, and we need to replicate that. The other states need to move towards that, mm. and then the industry. Oh, it would be a dream of mine to see the whole country unified on those sorts of things, um, independent electrical inspectors, that mm. sort of thing on every system is so important because 
what we see on social media is crap solar. Uh, most very rarely is that in Victoria now. Mm. That's mainly, unfortunately, in, in New South Wales and Queensland. So you're working in the border region. You must see actually the quality of installs quite different in, in New South Wales versus Vic. Is that the case? Well, the beauty of it a little bit is that it doesn't sort of encroach too much on New South Wales because some of those companies, they're like, oh, we won't go that far south because then you're heading to Victoria. You can't go past that border anyway. Mm bit like Mexico, um, as the what you're saying saying's that, always been. You're saying there's some New South Wales companies in your region who go, oh, we want it's all in Victoria, too many rules, we can't break the rules uh, easily because they're inspectors and for that reasons we just stick to, the, to New South Wales. Is that what's happening? Particularly the fly-by-nighters. They mm. won't come past Wagga, <laughs> really, because it's just too close to the border. I think we've electrified that border somehow. <laughs> um, yeah, so they won't... They, it's not worth their so, their travel, so they just stick north of Wagga, and and that's how they operate. So, and it's funny. I went to Canberra uh, a couple of years ago, and I wasn't getting. I opened up my social media, and all of a sudden, I started getting all these ads for cheap solar and all this stuff. And I'm like, why am I getting this crap? What's mm. going on? Then I realised because I was so far away from Albury Wodonga and from from Victoria where I wasn't seeing those ads. Mm. And I just went, wow, like now I know why people complain so much of what they get in their, in their social media feeds. Because basically in Victoria you have now a very stringent regime to double check the systems mm. and the cheap companies just can't fulfil those rules. They can but they can't participate in the soul of Victoria. No, they can't do it at the price point they're charging. You, no. You, you have to cut corners. That's, yes. The, the unfortunately, oh, I, yeah, the fly-by-nighters cut corners because that's how they can maintain their cheap prices. Mm, mm. They're, they're based on volume and speed. They don't, there's no care factor there around safety or quality or positive customer engagement or anything like that. They don't care. They just want to get that job done, get out and get paid as quick as they can, never to be seen again. And what then means is that the inverter gets slapped anywhere, so maybe on a western wall, which means the thing is going to last only half the time that it could have on a southern wall where you'd run the cabling a bit longer. Yep. Those are the differences where the customer misses out. Yeah, that's right. Mm. And, and you know, cheaper product in the, in the balance of system. Mm -hmm. So you sell particular brands, uh, RSC, Fronius. Tell us a little bit why you've chosen those particular companies. Yeah. Fronius has been in this industry a very long time. They're as old as me in my <laughs> lifetime. So, um, you know, they've been around a long time. They know what they're doing. They, when I first started in the industry, they were the number one inverter. And then they seemed to disappear for a while and SMA came up and took over. Mm. And then all of a sudden Fronius came back to the market and they came back with a vengeance. They had put so much effort and, um, and investment into research and development and bringing out these amazing new products. They just blitzed it. So, but they're a quality made product. They're a longstanding company. They are there for the right reasons. They look at everything from an environmental perspective as well, which is really important in this industry that often gets forgotten. And the service that we get, uh, if we ever need it, is is always there, which is fantastic. That's really important to us and to our installers. It means less time on site. Those sorts of things is really important. But it also means, of course, less time the system is off for the customer. That's the thing. Yeah, exactly. So... If you've got that support there, then it means that the customer's happy instead of having to wait, you know, three weeks or a month or something for product. I've heard it four months gets, in some instances yeah. for a replacement inverter to come through. In all that time, the company actually didn't get a replacement inverter. Uh, the, the, in all that time, the customer didn't get a replacement inverter, so they lost power for four months Production. because they bought a cheap inverter and the company's service was crap. Yeah. Hasn't happened with Fronius? No. No, not like that. We also 
you know, sometimes we might end up with a second-hand inverter or something that's mm. out the back mm. and we'll go and swap that over for the customer mm. so that they don't, don't have downtime. If we know it's going to be a longer wait than what we would accept, then, yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll look at other ways around that we can try and get that customer up and running mm. as quickly as possible because to the customer, that that's lost money. Mm. That's lo that's a, a backward step in their investment, so it's really important to get them up and running as quickly as we can. Now, I understand the RSC panel are a little bit more efficient than some other panels, and obviously now roof space becomes quite important because people want bigger and bigger systems. Is that one of the reasons you picked that particular panel? There were multiple reasons why we chose the RAC panel. Um, one was it's made in Singapore, but also they could um, – modern slavery was something that really came out a few years ago that we really had to be aware of and conscious of, and they can track everything right back to the point of sourcing the raw product. And that's really important for us if we're doing tenders or anything like that, government work, big project work, it gives those companies peace of mind knowing that there's no slavery involved in the product. That Is that purchased. an issue in solar sometimes? Yeah, yeah, it has. And batteries has actually been the biggest one, but that's been um, – Abolish now, I believe, as well. So um, particularly as lithium's become more available and stuff again, and Australia's very rich with lithium. Uh, so we're, we're lucky in that regard. Um, the sooner we can stamp out any modern slavery is great. But unfortunately, it does still occur in, in some foreign countries. Mm. Um, and that's where it's really important as a company to do your due diligence and look into those sorts of things. So that the raw them. materials that go into it are not mined by kids and that kind of stuff. Is that what we're talking about? Exactly. Because most people think, what are you talking about, slaves? Where are they still slaves? There are countries yeah, child where- child labour. Mm. Child labour is a big thing, underpaying, mm. gross underpayment. The, the mm. clothing industry is another industry where it happens. So, mm. Mm. you know, everybody knows that that happens in clothing, but they don't necessarily know it happens in solar. So it's really important that we as business owners look into those sorts of things. And again, where are the warranties held? Mm. What happens if we fall over? You know, where does the customer go? We have no plans in going anywhere, but it's really important for us to know those sorts of things There's as well. There's a backup. Yeah. Anything else about the panel that you like? Is it good, are they good looking? Are they uh, they dance under moonlight? <laughs> well, for me, um, I call it solar porn. You know, a good looking solar panel, a good looking wind farm, that sort of stuff. Um, it, it's those sorts of things really excite me. I love solar panels. I love the looks of them. Um, but there's still a lot of people out there that don't like the aesthetics on their mm, houses. Mm. So with the RECs, you can get an all black panel so that it, you don't you don't see the square boxes inside the panel anymore like you used to. So it's a bit more hidden. So people like the aesthetic of the REC panel for sure. So if you go with an all black panel, would you then go with all black rail as well? Yes, you could do go all black rail. It depends on the customer's roof colour mm. and all that sort of stuff and how they would like it to look. Mm. That's where we give them those options. Mm. Mm. So when you advise a customer, what are the key considerations? Is it the longevity of the system? Is it the look of the system? Is it the price? What do you actually make as the uh, custom uh, most important aspect that you would like to emphasise with the customer? From our perspective, the most important thing for the customer is the longevity of the product and reliability of the manufacturers that make that product. They're the two components that we look at most. Um, and then because then that makes our job easier as well. We don't want to be chasing warranties, warranty work or anything like that. Mm. Um, but it gives the customer peace of mind as well. And and I'll, I'm open and tell our customer, I'm sorry, we won't use that brand. Mm. Do customers walk in and say, I want that brand, I heard it's quite cheap and this and that, yeah. and then you have to explain maybe you had a past experience or something yeah. like that? Or they will they will have a quote from somebody else mm. and it's different, you know, it's apples and oranges. So um, that's where we'll have a look at it. I'm like, look, unfortunately we're not, going, we're not prepared to quote on that that brand. That's not a brand that we use. Mm. Those mm. sorts of things is, is what I'll say. And we have had a bad, you know, we have had a couple of bad experiences over the years, over 20 years in business or around, you know, just shy of 20 years in business 
um, you you do have those experiences along the way where you you get your finger burnt every now and then. We had one recently where the brand, their inverter is great, but you add a battery to it and it's their battery and then we get complications and it's software updates all the time and not just software updates that they can do remotely, software updates where our installers have had to go out there and then the manufacturer doesn't pay us anything for that. Mm. That's not fair. It's mm. not an installation issue. It's a manufacturing issue. And that's where manufacturers need to step to the plate and start compensating installers for those sorts of things. And, I mean, you would look after the customer and if you don't do the upgrade, then the customer suffers. So really... That's right. We're not charging the customer for us to go out there mm. and do the software upgrade on an inverter that has a five-year or a 10-year warranty on it. Mm. And it's not a, it's not the customer's fault. It's not the installer's fault. It's not our fault. It's a manufacturing issue. And we're not being compensated for that. So that's it. We said... and. There's the line in the sand. We're not using that product anymore. So I would say if I summarise the company philosophy up in one sentence, you're very customer-centric. Absolutely. <laughs> they, they are. It's our customers and our staff that make our company. It's not Brett, Luke and I. Mm. We, we fall into the staff category because we work as a team. Mm. But mm. it's our customers. We're there to service our customers. Without our customers, we don't have a business. Mm. And without the staff that we have and without the, the, the relationship that we have with our staff and the shared values that we have with our staff, then we don't get that quality out there either. So we're lucky. We've got a great team. Is that just something that is more likely still to happen in regional Australia? Because in Sydney... Um, staff comes and goes in companies all the time. It's Is that something that you feel is more regional or is that something that you guys have tried to nurture more for your company? That's a really hard one, Marcus, because so much has changed since COVID. Mm. We were really lucky, like, you know, COVID, um, what was it called? The Great Resignation, uh, where everybody was resigning from their jobs and all of that was sort of happening in 2021, 2022. We didn't get that until 2023. We lost, you know, a number of staff or a few staff in, in 2023 for various reasons. It wasn't that they were just, you know, leaving our company to go to another solar company or anything like that. A couple left and went into air conditioning. Um, one person got out of electrical completely, didn't want to be an electrician anymore, Um you know, health reasons. There was there were various reasons why we lost out lost some of our staff last year, um, but we've rebuilt that. And I think we're lucky. You know, if you look after your staff, they do hang around, and we do try and look after our staff as best we can. Um, but solar's not an easy gig. Mm. Solar solar can be really hard work. They're out in the elements all day, every day. So you know, we it, it does have a time frame, I suppose, but that's where you've got the other career progressions that people can look to and stay with the industry, stay within the industry. They can go into sales, they can go into project management and they can go into design and engineering, all that sort of stuff. There's so many different areas they can go into. If you keep your staff happy, as you indicate, does it get a better outcome for the end customer too? Yes. We always ask our customers for feedback and for reviews and stuff like that, which is great. And it helps us keep a track of our quality assurance and and make sure there's nothing that we've missed or anything as well with our, with our staff. So it's good to know. And my most favourite reviews, and there's not been one, there's been a few, multiple ones, is when they say, it's so great to see a happy crew on site dancing and singing. <laughs> <laughs> and, I'm, and I know exactly who was on that job straight away as soon as I read that. But it makes me laugh and it warms my heart because to me, if our staff are doing that, then they're having fun while they're at work. It means they're enjoying something about mm. it, which is great. So, you know, it's not that, oh, yeah, it was it was schmick. It was so straight. It was so this or it was so that. It was like the best reviews we get from customers – they were so polite. They were so, um, they explained everything so well. They went through everything with me, all these sorts of things. That, that's what makes us see that we're doing a good job and that's what 
reflects then with the customer because that's coming, you know, the, the employees are doing a great job, the customer gets a great um, experience and then that comes back to us via review. So it's it's all interconnected and it's all so important in the big picture of business. I appreciate that. It makes me feel a bit gooey here now. <laughs> <laughs> When you when you come up on site, we, the boys will ask you what's your favourite song, and you can get in and dance with them. Right, right. Have a little it'll, dance party. It'll, it'll be an eighties song. <laughs> um, now, after a while, solar panels they sit there, they don't move. I mean, I don't think they need much maintenance, but occasionally some people say, "Oh, I can come up with a hose and clean them up for you." Can anybody do that kind of work? No, no. <laughs> it's, how hard can it be? I mean, I'm up on the roof. I like heights. I'll put my hose on it. I put my pressure sprayer onto it. I oh. really give it a good whack now. Yep, that's What's right. wrong with that? Get the car tree out. Yeah, no. Um, look, I have a family member, a cousin, who would ring me and she said, Bobby, can you talk to my husband and get him off the roof? He's up there cleaning the solar panels again. Is he over 60? He's over 70. And he well, they don't this. bounce that well I'm anymore. Like, oh, my God, get him off the roof. And she's like, he's not listening to me. So, yeah, so it's really funny. Um, no, not anybody can clean your solar panels. That's really important to say. And it's not cleaning's one thing, giving them a hose off or giving them a light br- rub over with a soft bristle mm. brush, that's fine. But if you've got anybody, never, ever pressure wash because that can lead to water getting into the panels that then causes faults, can void warranties, all of these sorts of things. But the other thing is, remember, it is an electrical appliance that is on your roof and on your wall and you do not want somebody who is not qualified in looking at it, touching it. So we always... We're talking high voltage here, do we? Well, it's low voltage, which is actually more dangerous no, than but, high voltage. Right, right. But I mean, I mean, it's six hundred volt or something like that. So yes. if you get that in DC, that that's a dam with water and everything. That's right. It that can could kill be someone. actually, yeah, yeah, that could it, be deadly. Yeah, it could. So kill you someone. just went there to clean the panel, and you ended up at your own funeral. Yeah, shouldn't be that. It shouldn't be that detrimental. Mm. But um, when we've talked to cowboys, there's been some. We've seen some weird stuff out in, out there on those roofs, mm. but. Our concern is that if you've got a non-qualified person or somebody who doesn't have solar experience, they don't know what they're working with, they don't know how to identify what faults are there or may not be, how it's safe, isn't safe, those sorts of things Cabling come into issues play. issues and all that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, once upon a time we used to use plastic cable ties to to attach the cable mm. to the railing mm. and all that sort of stuff. Well, that's not allowed anymore. That hasn't been allowed for about, you know, for a number of years now. We've got to use stainless steel. And the reason why that was is because um, the plastic degrades over time, becomes brittle and breaks, and then that leaves the cables lying on the roof. Can't have the labels, the cables lying on the roof because you get leaf litter and all that sort of stuff that might blow under it and then become a risk factor. So, And, I mean, those roofs also can become 80, <clears throat> 90 degrees hot. So yeah. you've got a plastic cable now lying on that heat year in and year out. Yeah. You tell me it wouldn't degrade because yeah. of the heat factor. So I'd say I get that. Yeah. So what do you recommend for somebody who wants maintenance on their solar? Well, it's recommended that you have your system checked over every one to two years. Mm-hmm. So, And I will always recommend that it be a solar professional. Somebody who has experience with solar understands solar. That way they can identify any potential risks early and it can be rectified as soon as possible before, before it becomes a problem, before your system breaks down, all of that sort of stuff. So so, so they're not just going up there to do a clean. They're actually having a look that everything is properly screwed on and there's nothing untoward and those kind of things. That's exactly what our guys do. They look over the whole system. They clean your panels, but then they check over the connections to make sure nothing's come loose. Mm, mm. They check over the inverter, again, checking nothing's come loose. They check the readings on the inverter, make sure it's producing what they would expect that mm. size system to be producing. They do an emergency shutdown and restart on it to make sure it's shutting down and restarting within the acceptable time frames that's set by the energy regulators, those sorts of things. So it is, it is a... A genuine service. Mm. It, you know, you don't let your accountant service your car. 
So why would you let somebody else service your solar system other than a solar professional? In the olden days, we got a lot of money out of the feed-in tariff, and now that's kind of gone. So what are my alternatives there? Get a battery? There's still a lot of people in Victoria who are under the historical 60 cent feed-in tariff. So that's where the house uses its power first, but everything that they export, they get paid 60 cents a kilowatt for. So it's been really lucrative for those people. But they also paid more for their systems back then, a lot more. So that ends in November this year, so November 2024. We will then see those people wanting to upgrade or look at their watts next because a lot of those systems were only one and a half kilowatts or two kilowatts in size. So they were reasonably small. Some might have been a little bit higher but but not many because it cost so much to put, mm. put in back then. $8,000 yeah. plus um, after rebate, sometimes a little bit less. But well, our one and a half kilowatt system that we put in cost us $16,000. Mm. Wow. So, you know, that was – and then – we had the $8,000 rebate come mm. off that. So mm. it cost us eight grand mm. for one and a half kilowatts. So, yeah, pretty big. Um, so those people coming off the 60 cents, they're looking for their watts next. But they're, most of them are going to be early adopters anyway. Um, so they'll be looking not only to increase the size of their solar system, they'll also be looking for whatever else it is that they need to do to make their lives and their houses more efficient. So they'll be looking towards battery technology. They'll be looking towards the heat pumps that can be compensated through solar so effectively they have free hot water. They'll be looking at, you know, they may already have EVs, electric vehicles, or they'll be looking to get an electric vehicle. So they'll be wanting to factor in those sorts of things when we're sizing a new system for them mm. when they when they when it's time for them to upgrade. So for anybody who does have a smaller system and is losing their feed-in tariff in November, uh, what's your advice? Uh, wait till November, October, no. and stay in line, or no, don't wait. <laughs> Come now. <laughs> um, it's. It's really good opportunity now. You've got six months left of it. It's a really good opportunity to do all your research now mm. and be ready. And then when you're ready or once you've gotten your quotes, because, you know, it'll take, you know, it could take three, four weeks to get your quotes and stuff in order, depending on what your system is and us designing it and everything. Um, so, yeah, it could be the three or four week time period for that and then by the time you make your mind up you can sit there or do your research or whatever it is that you want to do you'll be ready to press go. The other thing is also November, December is always a very busy time for solar because it's more bright, there's more sun, people think about it more so if you then decide to in the middle of that boom throw your needs into it and everybody else it's going to be a hell of a time in November. Well the other thing that happens as well is the STC rebate will reduce slightly at the end of December. Mm. So we always do have that rush heading into Christmas. So if people are going to wait, they're going to be ending up in that little bottleneck <laughs> that we that we see occur before Christmas each year. So if they get in now, pay their deposits, get on the list, then, yeah, then they can go through the, that then. So the advice is if you've got a $0.60 cents fit-in tariff in a small system and you're losing that in November – Go and contact your local installer now mm -hmm. instead of waiting till November when you suddenly realise, oops, my bill's getting higher, what do I do about it? Because by then you'll be at the back of the queue. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of people that will get bill shock if they wait because mm. a lot of things have changed mm. since they put in their solar systems. And they were very protected and had a really good go for a long time. Absolutely. We made some nice coin out of our solar system. Mm. Okay. I hear that solar systems are getting bigger, but that also means that people potentially export more and they're not getting the big feed-in tariff anymore. What are the alternatives? So we'll talk to our customers about how to use their power and when to use their power. And it also comes down to what works for them in their lifestyles as well. That's number one. But it's also making sure that they're educated so that they can, it's called load shifting, that's an industry term. So effectively they can look at ways that they can reduce their nighttime usage, flip it over to daytime when their solar is being used, and then they will be exporting less out to the grid. And what that means, instead of being paid, you know, anywhere from four, seven, four cents a 
kilowatt to 15 cents a kilowatt, they're saving themselves 35 to 50, you know, 50 plus cents I've seen now a kilowatt. So there's much greater savings out of using your solar as it's being produced than sending it out to the grid. So you say your washing machine, your dishwasher, your pool Pool pump, pump. your EV charging if possible. Hot water. Hot water, heat pump, all do that during the day. Yes, but not all at once. Right. There's a trick there, Marcus. So just <laughs> let them stagger it on a staggered string yep. so that your solar constantly gets utilised, let's say, if you're not at home, and that way you will see a huge difference in your bill. Absolutely. And that's what we talk to our customers about is being sure that you're staggering your usage across the solar production time mm. because if they put all of those things on at once, then they're going to use all their solar. They could possibly still draw in from the grid And then they'll have, what, three or four hours during the afternoon where they're exporting everything out to the grid. Mm. So, no, you need to stagger it across the day. So pool pump times, washing machine times, dishwashing times, EV charging times, hot hot water heating times, all of those sorts of things. Stagger them across the day and then you'll be right. And all the modern appliances now do have timers so that can all be programmed. Yeah, much easier. So and a be- lot of it you can now start to do through your phone. They all have apps. Hmm. But that means the 16-year-olds will be very busy helping mum and dad. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but mum and dad will want to know the t- hints and tricks <laughs> so that they can save money. And especially when they have a 16-year-old because they have very long showers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, some people use contractors. Others have in-house employers to do the solar installation and the batteries. Uh, any diff? big difference. So we have all of our electricians on staff and that then means that we can then train them the way we want to be trained and then it helps us with our quality assurance. So making sure that, you know, we know our staff are doing things to not only Australian standards, not only best business practices but to our standards and I think that's really important to remember that Australian standards are the minimum. So we thrive to our own standards and by having our employees directly employed, then that helps us stick to our standard. Whereas if we've got a contractor and a lot of these other companies do use contractors, once they've done the job and they're gone, it's very hard to get them back to rectify anything. Mm. And you really do need somebody else then going around doing quality assurance checks on them to make sure that they're doing it to your standards. So you need another person to employ to do that. Whereas if you've got people in-house, you can do it as all through their apprenticeship. So they learn it that way. They learn how it's done. I had a I had a installer a couple of years ago who was in, he rang me in a bit of strife. He was, you know, he'd gotten caught out for where he did his apprenticeship from and he he looked at losing points on his licence and everything and he was in a bit of a bad way and he said, Bobby, what do I do? He said, ever since I've left there and joined the Solar Cutters group and everything, he said, I now know what I was doing was wrong but I didn't know any different because I wasn't taught any different. Mm. Whereas now he's then realised and completely changed how he does installations. So it's really important to make sure that we're training our staff the right way but to our own standards and then that way it helps with warranty work. There's less issues that could go wrong. Um, we know that it's we do things a certain way. So it also helps us tell if there's been another electrician come in after us. All these little hints and tips and tricks along the way but it's much better quality-wise and customer outcome-wise for an in-house installation team. And for any audience to explain, for example, you can get away with a minimum number of brackets because it's under the panel you can't see. But if you guys specify how many brackets you believe it needs to really make it a robust system, that's where somebody can cut a corner and do it differently. Or you can look for the best access for the cabling to run through the walls so that it's visually a less impactful system, but somebody else might just run it even over the gutter and run it down the wall, and then somebody has to look at these ugly conduits. Sometimes they're unavoidable, but if somebody really tries, 
those are the differences you're talking about? That's it. It's the one percenters that they talk about in sport. It's the same thing in work, mm. that going doing that extra 1% mm. or having that care factor and not being on the clock or being paid by the panel or, you know, those sorts of things, um, it's a completely different story. You get a completely different outcome at the end of a job. And it's not necessarily even just at the end of the job. In 10 years, it's a different outcome between the two systems. In 15 years, it's a different outcome. In 20 years, it's a different outcome because you might have one that's there for that whole time, but the other one might have already been replaced. Mm. And that's not very good for the environment either. No, that's a big thing for me is waste in our industry. We're meant to be an industry doing much better for our environment. That's why we're doing this. Mm. Um, so we need to make sure our waste practices are right as well because otherwise we're just adding to the problem. Mm. So you care for the customer's house like you care for your own house? Absolutely, it, yeah, I do. Mm. Yeah, Maybe a little bit more even. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what they say, <laughs> a mechanic's car always breaks down. <laughs> Builder's house is never finished. <laughs> but they're all too busy looking after their customer. <laughs> That's it. Um, many years ago, there was a term called solar sharks and solar cowboys. But it looks like Victoria is now relatively cowboy free. Are they still around? They're still around, just not as much, thankfully. Hmm. So um, a lot of them seem to have moved over to hot water, funnily enough. Um, but that's now starting to be addressed by the Victorian government, which is great. So in Victoria, we don't have them so much anymore, which is a relief. Mm. Um, that's That's been a great thing to see because it means there's not as many cowboys out there, but they are still there. Like they are still, sometimes they'll, you know, they won't knock on your door and offer your solar. Mm. They'll knock on your door and offer your light globes. Mm. Oh, I'm, by the way, while I'm here, would you like a solar system with your <laughs> with your fifty light globes? Ah. You know they they try different tactics. So um, yeah, they they're still there, but not like they used to be. They've moved on elsewhere now. And I heard in some cases they sold very very cheap crap, but then charged three times as much because the customer didn't know any better. Well, this is where we'd see they would be selling inferior product, or not great product, average product but they were inflating the prices because and that's because they were being they they were pressuring the customer saying the rebate's ending Friday you've got to sign up now mm. if you sign up now i can do this blah 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 oh hang on a second let me just ring the office office says they've got a vacancy we can install it next wednesday if you sign up now wow you know those sorts of tactics is what they were using so um, to get rid of them is a, a great thing because, and I'll, I'll always tell customers, never buy anything under pressure. Mm. So like if the if a rebate is changing or ending or anything like that, we'll put it on our social media as soon as we know. So Don't always trust the first person you talk to. And so some of those artificial deadlines are actually not even true. Correct. Yeah, I've even had to, I was the second person with this customer, I had to pull out my phone and go to the government website, blow it up and show them that it, what the end date of that rebate was hmm. and it was not whatever they were trying to tell me that the first company had told them. So um, because the first person they talk to is the baseline. Hmm. Wow. So, yeah, that can be sometimes difficult. But, you know, yeah. we... We're, we've got an established name. We've got a good reputation. Uh, our customers know that we'll look after them and so we're pretty lucky in, in mm. that regard. Solar panels on the roof, are they like tiles? You just whack them any which way or there's <laughs> a, should you put care into the directions? Yeah, there's a whole lot of things that come into play when we're working out where solar panels can go. Unfortunately, you get some out-of-towners that do. They'll just slap them up wherever and however they feel fit. Um, the easiest and the fastest way is what they look for. Mm. But for us, we look at it from a couple of different perspectives. One, we've got to ensure that we're we're installing them to Australian standards and to manufacturers' requirements so that warranties and everything are um, are valid. But two, it's got to look good, but also production. 
production is really important. You want to get the most out of your system that you possibly can. So putting them sometimes on the western roof, like north used to be the primary roof that we would put them on because of the sun and all across the day and blah, 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 blah. Now with the lower feeding tariffs, now west might be the better roof because you might be out, go to work early in the morning, you come home in the afternoon and that's when you crank up the air conditioner and that's when you crank up your, you know, cooking Electric dinner cooking. and all that sort of stuff. So therefore the western roof, so it gets that later production, it might be the be more beneficial aspect to mm. put it on. But there, we do look at various things around panel placement on a roof before we go out and install. There's a whole design done that we the customers sign off on. Our installers know what they've where everything's got to go before they get to site. Then they get to site and they obviously look at it again and then they start installing. So that way they know what to expect when they're out there and if they get out there and something's happened and they're like, oh, that's not really the best place, then they'll ring us or Brett or whoever's sold it and talk to them and say this is, you know, or Luke, whoever the designer is, they'll say, oh, this has changed or that's changed mm. um, and then we can have a conversation with the customer and then the customer knows so that they don't come home at night and go, that's not where they were meant to go. Mm, got it. So you're looking at the customer's consumption pattern. So if they use a lot in the morning, you would put it east. East, yeah. If they are cranking the aircon up in the afternoon, west. west. And um, you might do both. Mm. So you might do both and sometimes you might even do a little bit on the north as well. So, mm. um, And we've even been installing some some sort of with a southern, southerly aspect. Mm. It depends on the house design. Um, we've had some flatter roofs that sort of slope towards the south mm. but those customers that have built those houses know and then they have they built that ha those houses with that in mind that they would need a bigger solar system to compensate for that aspect mm. batteries are they worth it yes depend it, the question is why would why do you want one what do you want your battery to do that's the question i want to show off to my neighbors so if you want to, if <laughs> if you want to keep up with the Joneses, then yes, you're going to do batteries. Uh, I um, also get a few blackouts. Yeah. So, for the when we have conversations with our customers around battery, it depends a bit on where they live and what incentives they may be eligible for, or what incentives may or may not be there. That's really important. Um, but the other thing comes now into play now around energy security, and Unfortunately, with even some of the weather events we've been having, like, you know, down south in Melbourne, there was a massive storm that ripped through the Dandenongs 12, 18 months ago, um, and that saw them without power for weeks. Mm. People were running off home generators. The government had to go out and buy generators to supply all these people. Um, you know, we've even had the fires, all that sort of stuff that's impacted on people's power. But... Um, so energy security has been really big and for us in our region, it was more an issue for those that lived out of town uh, until recently. <laughs> we used to tell our customers, oh, you know, in, in Wodonga, we used to tell our customers, oh, you know, it's energy security is not really a big deal in Wodonga. We don't, if we have blackouts, they normally only last a couple of minutes, not too long. Um, so you might have a different battery system that you would use there. Mm -hmm. However, Recently, we've had a number of blackouts that have not only lasted minutes but hours, and there was one that was 24 hours in the, for mm. a particular area. So batteries are really starting to become a conversation regardless of where you're living now um, so that people in those events can can have continuous power. I was on the social media whilst those blackouts were going on and people were saying, you know, kids wouldn't go to bed because they didn't have a night light. So the kids were scared. All these little things that you don't think of unless you're in that situation. People with health issues, um, life-saving equipment, all of these sorts of things Fridges. come into play. Fridges, freezers. You know, one of our one of our staff said, Bob, how, can, how long will my stuff last in the freezer? So, you know, there's all these things that, in town, we took for for 
um, mm. for granted. Whereas out of town, I know growing up in Yakandanda, the wind would change and we'd have a blackout or a brown out. Mm. So we were used to it, but not for these long periods of time that we're seeing coming out of these weather events either. Weeks without power is very different. And some may say, well, but if, a, if I've got a blackout for a prolonged period of time and I've got a battery, the battery's only going to last so long anyway. Well, then it will actually recharge the battery the next day as long as we've got sun. So that's, you know, depends on weather and stuff like that. But, I mean, even if it's a little bit rainy and this and that, you will actually still generate solar. Yeah. yeah. And in those instances, you can put in a generator plug or something and mm. plug a generator in if you need to. But um, you'll get a lot further with a solar and a battery system than with just a solar system in those events, that's for sure. But you still got to be a little bit frugal. You can't start baking exactly. cakes and uh, getting the uh, jacuzzi going. Huh? Yeah. No, that's right. Spa got to go off. <laughs> Those sorts of things. So that's where you become a little bit frugal with what you're using and how you're using it. Mm. And that way you can prolong the life of the battery charge. Yeah. Now let's say I'm a customer, I'm considering solar integrity. Um, give me kind of a couple of dot points of what would you be supplying to me to give me as a customer a good outcome? Yeah. Um, the primary points for solar integrity for our customers is that we have an install sales and installation team. It's locally owned, it's locally operated, we live within the region and we're here for the long time. This is our passion, this is our career path and this is where we see we want to be for a long time. So we will always be around to help you long after the installation. That That's the big thing. Plus um, we invest in our staff. We invest in training for our staff. Uh, we invest in their well-being. Um, and, yeah, so we, so we really want to be there for the long time and make sure that we're using quality product and everything as well. It's funny, we love our customers but we would love it if we only ever had to go there once. <laughs> if you know what I mean, you know, yeah. you don't want to keep going back for to fix things up. Mm. So mm. if you can go once, install it, install it right, perfect, and then come back when they want to upgrade or they want to add a battery or they want to do hot water or they want to do an EV mm. charger, those sorts of things. You don't want to keep going back to have to fix, fix things up. Now, look, with all this positive about customer, um, on a Saturday morning, sometimes I get a bit cranky. You must get cranky customers, even so maybe it's not really fair. How do you deal with a difficult customer? Or maybe you've stuffed up. Have you had a situation oh, like that? We're human. We're not perfect. So, yeah, we do. From time to time, we do all make mistakes, even with our staff. It's like if you make a mistake, own it. Then we can fix it. Mm. There's no worries about Don't that. hide it under the... No, that's right. Don't sweep it under the carpet. Mm. Um, you know, we... And apprentices, they're learning, so mistakes do happen. Um, but we we own it. And, you know, if we've got a, a customer who's upset about something, often they want to be heard. Um, and so we can hear what they've got to say, find out what the problem is, and then we can work out how we can rectify it and how we can make good. Because it's one thing to, if you make a mistake, one, you've got to own it, and then two, how can we make good? How can we do right? How can we do better? Not just by them, but by future customers as well. So everything's learning and everything's evolving. Mm. Um, but no, we, we really do listen and we really do value the feedback that we get from our customers. Going forward, looking into the future, I mean, we've been on the solar coaster. Mm -hmm. What kind of excites you? Where are we going? I love working at the cutting edge of technology. And I think because our industry is still so young, even though we've been around, you know, solar panels were invented in Australia, even though we've been around a long time, our, our industry is still quite young. So there's so much advancement still to occur, but not just that, in the whole electrification picture, there is so much to happen. So we will start using our homes more efficiently. We will start using our cars more efficiently, where we will start using the battery in our cars to charge, to power our home, um, home automation as that all comes in. It will all be one connected 
little web um, of, of its own existence. So I think it's really interesting to see what's going to happen around automation um, and and where our, what our energy looks like in the future because our current, our electricity market as we've known it is dead. So it's going to look completely different in five years to what it looks like now. It's going to look completely different again in 10 years um, and then in 20 years completely different again because by that time we should be completely 100% renewable and we should then also be predominantly EV, if not all EV, electric vehicle as well. So um, our lives will be completely different and that's exciting. Bring on the Jetsons. Okay. Well, Bobby, I really enjoyed you today telling us from the past to now and the future. Thanks, Marcus. No problems. So, Luke, how long you've been with Solar Integrity? Uh, I think it was nearly seven, six or seven years now. Right. Um, and you started as an installer or, or did you? I started as an apprentice electrician um, with a previous company. Um, and then, yeah, I moved, once I turned qualified, I moved up to Sydney for a couple of years just for a bit of a sea change, a um, bit more experience, still done solar. Um, and then, yeah, moved back to the Aubrey Wodonga area and joined in with Solar Integrity. So if you installed solar initially in Sydney and then mm -hmm. you went back to Aubrey Wodonga, what's the difference between the regional and the city kind of installs? Um, the difference is obviously the houses, <laughs> the size of the houses, um, the installation difficulties. Um, size of the wise, houses, Sydney's houses are bigger or Aubrey? Much bigger. Yeah, yeah. Some of, well, the areas I was working, Northern Beaches areas, you know, quite nice houses, big. Big a bit of coin there. Big money, yeah. So we were doing a lot of solar edge. We were LG dealers um, mm. and batteries too. You know, we I think we installed one of the first of the Tesla Powerwalls when they came in. Um, so I got some good experience firsthand with the with the newer technology of batteries. Um, so I started, yeah, done a few of those and and then, and, and, the, and then what about when you went back to Aubrey Wodonga? You get smaller houses? Smaller houses, yeah. Uh, installation was a lot easier. Um, not as many batteries um, when I first came back, but starting to really build that up now. Um, More nicer customers, less finicky? Uh, yeah, you still have the mix. Still have mm. the mix, yeah. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't say the Sydney customers were unpleasant to work for. Mm. Um, mm. I think a few were, you know, you got your tradies, you don't want them to go through your house and that sort of thing. But um, we don't get that as much in the country, mm. I would say. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So now that you're back in Aubrey Wodonga, you're an Aubrey Wodonga boy, are you? Yeah, yeah, local out at uh, Talangata, where I grew up, which mm. is about half an hour from Aubrey Wodonga. Um, but yeah, live in Wodonga now, I've been in there for. for five or six years now. Yeah. So how does it feel working in a local company in the local area where you grew up and all that? Um, do you have any desires to kind of piss off again or? No, not this stage. Like I, <laughs> I've got a house there now. So it's, um, you know, locking down with that. But, um, you know, I you know, play football in the area and all those types of things. So I don't see myself going anywhere now. Um and it's, you know, it has its advantages in, you know, living in the area and knowing the area, knowing the people, um, playing football in different areas and that sort of thing. So you, you can sort of expand the business in different areas and that sort of thing as well. So if they pick all integrity and pick you to install their system, the chances that you're hanging around is pretty high, is it? Well, yeah, they <laughs> might see me running around on the football field on the weekend or down the street. Um, but yeah, definitely. I'd, yeah, I'd like to yeah say that I'll I'll be hanging around long term. Um, mm -hmm. If there's any any issues that that do arise, or if it's a returning customer, I'll most likely see my face again somewhere. Mm -hmm. Now in Sydney, when you used to install Northern Beaches, has a lot of trees, so you would have had a lot of shade issues. Does that come up in Albury Wodonga too? And what do you do about it? Yeah, it still does come up. Comes up everywhere. Um, obviously, we try and avoid the areas if you can, um, but. We still like to use Solar Edge in those cases, or um, Tygos on Frony systems. So mm. there's still um, options there to to do that. Um, but if we can avoid the area, we do. But if we can't, we'll 
still try to optimize the system to, mm. to perform its best, yeah. Mm. Do you actually provide any guarantee to a customer that the solar system is going to perform this much and they're going to save that much on the bill or is it just all good luck and here she goes? You can never guarantee that kind of thing. We, we use you know, software programs that you know, sort of predict the previous weather mm. and performance of the system, takes into your panels, efficiencies, um, input your um, power bills, all those mm. types of things. So it gives them a bit of an idea what their, their power bills may look like, what the system may perform if, if the weather permits. Um, but obviously you can't predict the weather. Um, trees grow, all those types of things. You've got to still maintain the system to make sure you get the performance that you were getting when you first installed the system as well. But plus also the customer's uh, own consumption pattern can change, isn't it? They're yeah, absolutely. Five-year-olds turn into teenagers and suddenly the hot water needs go up. Yep. So in your design of systems initially, is all of that taken into consideration? Uh, to a degree, yes, yeah. Um, but we try and encourage if you do put a, a decent-sized system in, you can have that luxury of living a bit more comfortably, you know, running that air conditioner a little bit longer. Mm. Um, not so much trying to obviously savings first and foremost but some people like to be a bit more comfortable um so you have that luxury of you know heating the house or cooling the house for a little bit longer or those types of things as well so try to take that into account with the customer not just that dollar figures um, that feel good sort of thing right so if you have done solar for quite many years. What's kind of the general dot point advice for customers to get a really good quote and a good outcome? Um, definitely research. You got to know what you're what you're purchasing. Um, there's that many. You can get a lot of different opinions on systems. There's a lot of different types of products and all those types of things. But obviously, sticking with local companies that have been around long term. Um, and that's the same with the products as well. You know, the companies that have been in Australia for a long time, um, even though they've been, you know, the companies may have been around for a long time, but how long they've been in Australia for, mm. um, I find a, de a good one to, to follow up. Um, and, you know, their future future plans in Australia and that type of thing as well. And what about install? Is that important? Yeah, it's that's install is very important um, for the longevity of the system. Um Maintenance on the system, you want to make sure that you, if you are doing maintenance up there, it's going to be safe in 10, 10, uh, you know, 10 15 years' time. Um, but, you know, safe for, you know, winds, storms, you know, weather events that this, the panels are going to stay on the roof. Um, you're not going to get any roof leaks. Um, there's not going to be any electrical hazards down around the ground where, you know, kids may be running around and pulling on cables or switching things off. Mm. Um, and those types of things, yeah, it's very important. So you go on roofs regularly because you're part of the install team. Um, what's the dodgy brother stuff you find sometimes? Oh, <laughs> uh, well, it's, yeah, there's, it varies a lot. Um, but, you know, one thing is using incorrect mounting equipment. Um, you know, you've got clip lock roofs, making sure the bracket meets the profile. Tile roofs, making sure the tile fixings are fixed correctly and your tiles you know, are replaced properly, that you're not getting roof leaks or if someone does walk around the area, they're not going to crack tiles, that type of thing. So you have found cracked tiles after the system's been installed? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, sometimes it's inevitable, you, but you just got to make sure that they, they do get replaced if it does happen. So um, you're saying if the tiles are very brittle, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some mm. tiles are more brittle than others. Mm. Um, but, yeah, once you do put tin, uh, sorry, tile brackets underneath, it can make them a bit more of a hazard, um, but, you know, adding panels around there, you obviously don't have the free range of just walking in the better spots. You've got to try and dodge that area, which may cause more um, broken tiles and mm. that sort of thing in the long term. But then if there is a broken tile, you would make sure that they get replaced or yeah, a bit definitely. of silicon and here we go? No, 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 no not quite. Um, we do ensure that if the customer does have spare tiles, um, we do try and keep a few in our in our workshop as well to take out to site um, if we can match the same profile. Um, mm. Otherwise, mm. you can replace it with a um, you know a, a flashing that goes over the top of them that right, type of right. thing. Yeah, I'm not sure how often you're involved in selling solar and all that, but what would be the factors to determine what size solar system a customer needs? Um, 
I suppose it's what they would like to try and run during the daytime, I, I find. Um, if they run the air conditioning, if they've got EV charging, um, those types of things, their pools, what they what they can sort of use during the daytime, mm. what their future plans are, you know, whether they are going to get an EV car or whether they're going to put a pool in or those types of things. Three Look kids. At the future, yeah, kids. Um, whether, yeah, lots lots of things. Mother-in-law of, actually is moving in next year. Yeah, well, those types of things. If, if people are going to be at home to use mm. that power, mm. Um, yeah. Mm. Got it. And EVs are coming. Everybody's talking about it all that. Is that affecting the size of solar systems going forward? Yeah, definitely. Um, the the EVs, they store a lot of, lot of energy. So if you can and have the opportunity to be able to charge them up during the daytime, you, you can do that from solar. Um, so making sure you correctly size the system, but not all EVs charge at the same rate either. So your car might only charge at three kilowatts or your car might be able to take seven and a half or the full, you know, full charge. So mm. making sure you, your system can do it if it's available and do it fast enough for you to be able to use that car when you need to, um, that, yeah, it's, it comes into play. Might. So bigger systems with EVs. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Mm. If that's what their, their plans are to try and charge that car quickly for them to use or, you know, draw it out over the day, then, yeah, definitely bigger systems, um, more uh, electrical use in-house, um, bigger appliances, bigger homes, um, all those type of things can um, play in the bigger solar systems, you know, single phase, three phase. If you're, if you're building a new house these days, I think if, if you are connecting to the grid, mm. um, definitely go for a three phase system so you can put more solar in but you've got more um, power there to be able to, to run those appliances mm. if you need to. What's the plus for a black panel? I've seen those pretty looking full black panels. Any pluses of that? Yeah, it's aesthetics, I suppose. Um, people like the the black look. Um, you can get the black rail to, you know, it, it can disguise the panels on the roof sometimes. It can make them stick out a bit, but it's all up to mm. customer preference. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Um, when it comes to the financial benefit of solar, if you'd have a customer who says, how much is it really going to save me? What would be your answer? Uh, it's, it can save you as much as you put into it, I suppose. If you can, like, if you can use that solar during the daytime, run your appliances when the sun's shining, it can save you quite a lot. But mm. if you're going to not use it to your advantage and not be at home or not turn things on and try and export it all for not very much um, and use all your power at night time, probably not going to save you as much as what it could. So it does come down to the customer and how, how they use their power. Mm. Um, you can obviously put in different devices to do it automatically for you um, if you can't manage these things. Um, but, yeah, it does come down to the customer a lot. Mm. You've got obviously New South Wales and you've got Victoria customers. Are there any battery rebates already available? Yeah, there's battery rebates in, well, interest-free loans for Victoria, um, not so much in New South Wales. Um, so we don't see, we don't do a lot more, a lot of work in New South Wales currently. Um, With batteries? Yeah, battery and solar. Um, mm. we, most of our work's Victorian, um, just with the, the help from the government for that side of things, yeah. But it all comes down to, you know, what they're, what they're using it for and what they the advantages of them putting in the battery doesn't suit everyone um, financially it doesn't suit a lot of people uh, but if they're getting regular power outages then that could be an advantage for you but you know you've got to think about if you are going down the line of putting in a you know getting an ev charger or getting an ev um, do you really need a battery there when you could potentially use the car and store your solar that way to you know, take the kids to school or drive to work each day. Um, but then if I'm possibly at work with the car during the work hours, yep. then I could at least charge some of it in my battery. Correct, yeah. And that would be literally free fuel for my car. Yep, yep, yeah, that's it is a good point. You can do can do that. Um, you just got to educate the customer that a house battery is not on the same scale as a car battery. So trying to put that storage into a house battery is quite small compared to your car. Um, so, But I if, still probably can get nearly 100K out of it. Yeah, yeah, you, you could quite possibly. Mm. Um, and if that's 
going to suit you to get to to and from work for the week, great. Um, it's yeah, it's very customer based and designing the system. That's where it's really important to to your customer needs. Mm -hmm. um, how important is repeat business? Yeah, it's really important. I suppose if you have the if you get the trust of the the client for you, for the first system and they're willing to come back to you um, to you know put some more panels up there if they think they need so mm. or if they want to put a battery or EV charger in hot water if their hot water fails what's the new technology um, it's really important and we you know we pride ourselves on being able to service them you know for multiple multiple reasons. So Solar Integrity does get repeat customers? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we we uh, really enjoy when a customer comes back for their, you know, for their next next purchase or their future needs or um, if they got any questions about their monitoring or anything like that, they might pop in or um, that's why we, we like to have a bit of a showroom there for customers to feel comfortable to come in and talk to our staff that are in the office or show them through our products that we have and the new products that are coming in and that type of thing, yeah. Right. The inverter, um, I just whack it on any wall. What what does it do? Uh, not quite. You know, it's it's quite a technical device, I suppose. You you need to look after it. Um, doesn't like to be hot or doesn't like direct sunlight. Um, so it's quite common, you know, to put it inside garages, but you just got to be careful. Garages do get quite hot as well. Um, so if you do have an outside south wall, Sometimes you get a nice breeze, um, so keeping them cool is a good, efficient way to get a bit more production out of your system. Um, weather, you know, you, as long as it's not getting smashed by the sun and rain and hail or all those types of uh, weather events, then um, yeah, you want to you want to protect your investment, I suppose. Mm. Where are the next two to three years, or even two to five years, going to get us? Are batteries going to be cheaper, or? Uh, I'd like to think so. I think, you know, with uh, EVs really ramping up, that technology for batteries will only improve and more mass production, I suppose, of them should bring the prices down, I believe. Um, but I see the EV market probably, you know, ramping up a bit more than the home batteries. Um, but lithium is probably not going to be the, you know, the be all end all, I don't think. I think there's going to be that many different technologies that people are developing um who knows <laughs> who knows what two three five years is going to bring out yeah it's quite exciting to see what what the future does hold now if i do buy a solar system nowadays the payback can be sometimes as quick as four years or thereabout if i buy a solar and battery system it is a little bit longer but it's still faster than if i buy a battery just by my, by itself so if I'm now looking into solar, would you actually say solar and battery is something I do should consider? Uh, yeah, it's definitely something to look at. Uh, there's no reason why it's it's not hard for us to quickly throw a price together to add a battery onto a system. Um, mm. But making sure the solar system is capable of taking a battery as well is really important. Um, and if it's going to be a big upgrade, if you do want to put a battery on down mm. the line, mm. Um, but also being able to expand your existing battery. So if we do sell you a battery, how easy is it for you to expand that battery if you do wish? Um, so there's, there's some systems that it is quite tricky. You've got to put a whole new pack on or you can just add a module mm. uh, to your battery system. So you know if that is something that you may look at down the line of increasing the system or you don't quite have the, the funds there to do the system you want right now, mm maybe next year we can add a few more modules to it to really optimize the system for you. I'm a customer. I got still the 60 cents feed-in tariff. I love it. But I hear it's finishing in November. What are my options? Oh, there's there's many options, many options out there. Um, you know, if you want to upgrade the system, um, whether you want to keep that system there, it's still working great. You don't want to waste your panels or your inverter quite easily leave it there potentially and put another one on next to it if you've got the space. Um, or if you like the safety features of the newer stuff, we can remove it, re recycle as much of it as we can and put a whole new butte system up there, add a battery. Um, depending on the size of the system that you have, you might need to add more solar. You might be able to just put a battery into it 
depending on, you know, the size of the system that you have. But, you know, reaching out and getting someone out there that knows what they're talking about um, and having a look over your house, going through your options, yeah, it's a good way to start, definitely. So if you lose your 60 cents feed-in tariff in November, contact Solar Integrity now. Don't wait for November because your phone will be pretty busy by then. Yeah, November is going to be a busy time, definitely. You know, November rolling into December happens quite mm. quick. You know how quick uh, Christmas rolls up mm. and, uh, you know, a lot of companies do shut down over that time. Mm. Um, and then there's not much in not much working days in January either. So getting in early is great. Um gives you a bit more time to think about it as mm, well. Mm. Um, it is can be a big investment. So, yeah, definitely giving yourself the time and not being rushed. And, you know, also we're not rushing out there to try and bang in before Christmas or something like that as mm, well. It makes mm. it a lot more streamlined, um, a lot more efficient install as well. Now, let's say I'm a customer. I've actually said Solar Integrity is my company. I want you to install my solar. Let's say you come on site. What are the steps? Oh, there's, there's lots of steps of getting out there, but obviously your, your standard going through all your, your safety um, for the site, making sure all your workers are safe. They know where the hazards are and those types of things. Um, yeah, setting up edge protection, making sure you know all your edges are safe and that type of thing. Um, so that means I can't just jumble dumble off the roof, is it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Making sure that's all safe. No one's going to fall off the roof. Humpty um, Dumpty. Yeah, that's it. It, it hurts <laughs> falling off the roofs. Um, but yeah, making sure everything's correct where where the locations are, where the panels are going, running through that with the customer second, third time just to, just to make sure um, they're happy where everything's going. Um, making sure your staff know where, where all the stuff's going and running through all that, yeah. Do you do the inverter first or the battery or the panel? Uh, it's sort of a bit of a sequence, I suppose. Um, you get a few of the guys up there starting on the roof. Well, a couple might start down on the ground, meet in the middle type of thing. Um, getting panels up there, everyone sort of gives a helping hand, make it uh, an efficient sort of efficient day, yeah. Mm -hmm. If I'm looking at uh, going off grid, you do you guys do off grid. What's your philosophy and knowledge about off grid? Yeah, we've done. I've done off grid for quite a few years now. Um, it's it gets more and more popular. I think each year, um, the cost for um, rural properties connecting to power gets expensive just to get connected. Obviously, once you're connected, it's no the cost doesn't stop there. Um, but yeah, off grid, it's the technology is definitely improved a lot as well. So you can you can do a lot more on an off grid system now, um, and they they do work very well. So you, you don't you don't have to you know top up your batteries once a month or once a week anymore. You've got lithium batteries where you can just sort of set and forget um, most of the time. But it's all about educating the customer as well, so they understand that they are off grid. They are still managing their own power. You know, it's not up to the power lines or the, the network anymore. You're still looking after your system. Um, so the systems can vary in sizes quite um, dramatically. If people want to run everything, you know, all the time, then they can get quite expensive. But if you can be quite savvy with your power, then yeah, you can definitely get away with a smaller setup that's you know a bit more cost effective. But you're effectively maintaining their power station, aren't you? Yeah, so um, after sales and answering the phone ha would have to be very important. It is very important, yeah. You, you, and it's funny, you still get the same same phone calls rolling into winter time when the customer hasn't serviced the generator or, you know, you've had three or four days of um, bad weather so the generator doesn't start or something like that. So, you know, you, you still see the the same issues, I suppose. Um, but like I said, it's all down to education and if the customers can learn how to manage their system themselves and you teach them that, then you won't get as many calls. And if you try and um, set that up at the start and show them through the system, show them how it works, making sure they understand it might take one or two, three times um, to really get them to understand the system and that does save the phone calls and the call outs, you know, on the weekend or Sunday afternoon or Sunday morning, those type of things, yeah. Mm -hmm. But do you love off-grid? Is there something because it's technically a little bit more challenging or? Yeah, it's 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 a bit of a feel-good when you, you, 
you got a brand new house there and you if the, if you're setting it up on their shed or on the house and then you're the one switching their power on and they're all independent um, it is a feel good and it's it's quite enjoyable type of system as well setting up batteries and battery inverters and solar and getting it all to communicate and work together um, but yeah it does feel good and it's, you know the customers get that feel good feeling as well and the best thing is no more electricity bills no that's right no no you don't have to worry about the bill coming in monthly or quarterly um you you might have someone down the road that's connected and see the power go out and the lights go out and you're up on the hill with all the lights still on mm. um which yeah it, it does happen it does happen so yeah it is good um I heard that in Victoria now systems are installed better than they used to be in the past because of your inspections. But you must have sometimes experiences where you go to an older system and you just want to shut your eyes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, the, the safety of the systems has improved a lot. Um, even when, I, like I said, when I was working in Sydney, when you were getting random in inspections um, to going back to Victoria and, and every system getting inspected, you you keep up to date with your standards and you, you sort of set a higher standard so then you don't have to go back to the system. Um, so it is really important that that safety and the you're continually training and, you know, making sure you're up to date with all the standards. Yeah. So is that something you're quite proud of with soil integrity that you kind of bother with that or is that just a waste of time? No, definitely not a waste of time. I mean, if you if you don't stay up to date, you're forever going back to systems and, um, you know, Solar Victoria doing audits all the time and that sort of thing. So you can't always just rely on your inspector trying to catch all the all the defects or um, you gotta you gotta make sure that it is you're, you're covering every point and making sure it is all up to standard and you know defects. You're going back to site to do little bits and pieces. It's and it's all time, time and money. So we can get in there, do it right the first time. We don't have to go back. Um, we can move on to the next job and mm. keep everything moving forward. You do residential and you do commercial, don't you? I mean, is it all the same? It's just commercial, like taking residential and just doing a copy, cup and copy, copy, and then it's just a bit bigger or is there more substantial differences? Uh, no, there is. There is definitely differences. Um, it's all to the needs of... I suppose the the client in the in the building um, commercial can be a little bit more streamlined um, on a bigger scale, just a lot more panels and bigger inverters and um, but you know the the electrical side of things it can be quite large as well, um, which can get quite technical and engineering and all those type of things do come into play. So it's not as simple as just rocking up to the house and getting it done in a day. It's you know a few days just in planning to mm. um, work out what you need and how to get it safely connected into the grid. How to get the panels on the roof. Yeah, absolutely. Is yeah. the roof strong enough to handle all the panels? Yep. Is the system sized the correct way? Yep. So they're all the difficulties with commercial, but you guys yeah, know definitely. all that stuff? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you know, it's and if, and if we don't know, we'll reach out to uh, making sure that it is safe and um, making sure we got all the engineering for it, um, which is really important. Obviously, you go to a lot of industry events to learn new stuff and this and that. What do you get out of these events? I suppose you're, you're at the forefront of um, new products and you can get try and get one-on-one -on -one if it's not too busy. But if you can get one-on-one -on -one with the new products, you know, learn about them face-to-face -face instead of trying to read manuals or webinars and that type of thing once they do release them. Um networking you know catching up with other other solar companies um wholesalers those types of things it's really beneficial um but yeah mainly mainly i suppose is that is the new products and seeing um your wholesalers seeing the manufacturers um seeing what's new seeing what you can do better um see so yeah that's probably the the main points for myself yeah well I really appreciate you teaching me about solar. No worries. Thanks Thank a lot, you. Marcus. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Want more Energy Answered? Visit yourenergyanswers.com for quality energy products, tools and calculators, and find your quality local installers. Please support the channel by liking the video, hit that subscribe button, and ring the bell, and check out all our other videos. You're still here? I'll see you next time. Bye.